Yo, everybody, this is Purge, bringing you guys a first-person replay commentary. I'm sitting in my bed. I hope you guys are okay with that. Uh, unfortunately, my desktop uh, very briefly died last night at about 2 a.m. when I was trying to play Hearthstone, and it's really depressing. I'm going to tell you that story really quick before I talk about this game. Um, I was playing, and then I blue-screened. I've been blue-screening occasionally, like once a week maybe for the last, I don't know, five months or something. So maybe not once a week it's been it's been in and out but finally i blue screened while i was playing and then it blue screened repeatedly upon restart so i tried taking some ram chips out to take t all four ram chips out though i had to take the processor fan off and i could tell that the processor fan was a absolute pain in the ass to put back on i just knew that was going to happen um and it ended up not being the ram and then eventually like an hour and a half two hours later by like dicking around trying to put the fan back on I uh, it I did one of the restore things that I had tried multiple times up until this point, and finally it worked. And apparently it's a hard drive issue, so my main uh, solid state drive is dying. So I'm gonna, I have a second one, so I'm going to reformat and uh, install Windows on my second one, and essentially hopefully get a new computer. Um, fingers crossed that all works out. Um, the fan though is is literally the most frustrating thing. I was trying to not say literally when I explained this, but it is the most frustrating thing that I've experienced. Alright, you know it's accurate this time. It's literally the most frustrating thing I've experienced in a very long time. To explain how this works, the fan is really thick and big, and you put it on top of the processor, and the screws to get on top of it are basically on these screws that are underneath the giant block. So I have to, like, hold the screw in two fingers, and I have to wedge it through these this, like, little opening next to the processor fan in the case, and then once it's down there, I have to get it under. So I have to like go down and then in about, I don't know, three, uh, maybe an inch, something like that. So I like have to get it inside three inches and then I have to set it on top of a screw that's sticking up through this like little metal thing. So I have to like do this like Mission Impossible thing with my screw where I put it in and drop it in and then land it on top. And then I somehow have to like twist it with my two fingers to like get it screwed on. So I'm gonna have to invent a tool later today, I think, to get my processor fan back on correctly and it has to be squeezed down otherwise it gets a little too hot i just checked the bios on it and it was like 90 uh, 90 degrees celsius when i didn't put pressure on it when i did put pressure it was like 45 which is a huge difference in temperature um, not double of course because celsius is not true temperature kelvin is true temperature so it's really like a difference of i don't begins. know 15 percent heat or something it, but it's still a pretty massive number difference so Let's let's do that up later. Um, so basically, this is why I'm on my laptop. If you guys didn't figure that out, I'm on my laptop right now. I'm gonna record this quick. I'm gonna post it, and then I'm gonna spend the rest of the day messing around and trying to fix my computer so that I can get back. I really wanted to stream today, actually, but unfortunately, um, I'd rather fix my computer immediately rather than stream on my laptop. So I'll do that. Okay, I am not playing on dying. I don't know why I'm on this. I'm playing Leshrac. Leshrac's a really good uh, support hero in a lot of ways, and he's he's actually a lot of fun to play and pretty rewarding because he has a skill shot with his first ability. So, um, I believe I was playing this game with DK. I'm not sure who else was in this game. Um, I looked at the list, and I didn't recognize the rest of them. I don't know if this is a stack. I think this might have been just a duo queue with me and DK. This is a game from about a week ago or something like that. But I'm playing support with a Chaos Knight versus a Broodmother. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe this Chaos Knight was new to Chaos Knight. So, if he does make a lot of mistakes, don't make too much fun of him. But I believe he was new. I was going to go stack that I think but I think I lost track of time and I got over there it looks like he did actually block it anyways so no huge loss for me there um the reason Leshrac is pretty important in the sense and by the way the reason why I didn't buy wards or anything like that I thought I was actually going to be farming Leshrac um the last the Chaos Knight I believe had some support hero or something like that and I think he repicked into Chaos Knight because he saw that we needed to carry and Chaos Knight Leshrac is actually a pretty good combo because Chaos Knight can stun and Leshrac can follow that up with a big nuke so um, it's actually a pretty legit lane. Um, so I grabbed a Ring of Basilius because I was in anticipation of buying a Ring of Basie, so that would give us armor and mana regen against the Broodmother, because the Broodmother spiders will dive you, for example. So I'm just going to do some casual pulling here. No, I hate that. That's happened to me like twice in the last two days. The center will stun right before it dies, and then it, it's not enough creep damage, and therefore my pull through won't work. So that was pretty frustrating. On the bright side, the um, the uh, the web is actually killing all the trees, so it should be a little easier to pull that large camp into the creep wave. So that'll make things a bit easier. So uh, this is why I didn't have sentry wards. This is why I didn't have dust, and this makes our job a lot harder. 
Against the Broodmother, you almost always need sentries to try to keep him shut down. We also have an Undyne, who, if I remember correctly, he does end up ferrying out sentry wards almost immediately um, to the lane, which should help quite a bit. We have pretty good kill potential against the Brood, especially if we get lucky on the Chaos Bolt. If we get a 2-second stun on Chaos Bolt, then we can have a 2-second stun from Split Earth, and then I can hopefully use either Diabolic Edict or uh, maybe Undyne, for example, to kill the guy. Um, cool things about Leshrac skill set though, I wish I was actually selecting my hero instead of instead of a Seder creep, but I'm not. But his first skill is Split Earth, it's very similar to what Lina's AoE stun does. It's a delayed cast time. The bright side of uh, the Lesh's stun is that the AoE increases as you level it. And it's actually a really strong nuke at level 1, it does 120 damage and it stuns for 2 seconds. Lina's stun is only 1.6, and it only does like 90 damage at level 1, something like that. So it's actually a really, really nice ability. One of the best skills in the game, in my opinion, and one of the best for Rubik to steal, actually, because it doesn't uh, have any cast time. So, It's also really good for farming. Most people look at it and they say, um, okay, I, I bought sentries there, but then I noticed that he had already bought sentries, so I bought a flying courier. Um, I was talking about how cool Split Earth is. Yeah, don't be afraid to farm with it. It's actually really good for farming. And when I used to play mid Leshrec, uh, maybe like two years ago in Dota 1, for example, um, I used to just focus on... Uh, farming with lightning on the mid lane, but then I started watching some high level players when Leshrac was being picked mid And what people started doing, we're looking for a kill here by the way, we do have a sentry ready to go Just looking to see if we can get a stun off There's the sentry Alright, he does throw the stun, we got a 3 second, that was really lucky I think his reality rift maybe actually dodged my split earth there not sure. But as you guys can see, the Chaos Knight's a little inexperienced. He tried to Reality Rift and then he messed it up because uh, the Brood ran too far. And then that ended up with uh, Radiant's top tower is under attack. With us not getting in. A little worried about dying to the Brood here. I guess he's not going to kill me, but... Um, so yeah, just use Split Earth to CS. So once it gets a couple levels into it, you can just position it over the whole creep wave and kill things. Or CS with it, for example. So uh, high-level players would do that in games. I was like, oh, I guess I could farm with that ability. I don't have to use lightning. Um, and the benefit of doing this is that you don't then have to put skill points in both split earth and lightning. You can just do edict as well as split earth in the early game, and that generally gives you a bigger punch as a support hero and lets you push. The reason that uh, split earth is, or sorry, diabolic edict is so good for pushing is because it randomly attacks targets around you, basically. Um, this includes invisible units. This includes towers. Um, this includes creeps. So if there's lots of creeps, it'll be split evenly. If there's lots of spiders, Diabolic Eater gets a little less useful. So keep that in mind. Always help your ally when a spider... I'm sorry, when a... So unfortunately that was a level 1 stun there. So we're not going to be able to get the follow-up here. Um, yeah, if there's a lot of spiders, Diabolic Eater's not going to help kill the spiders very well. Um, if spiders are attacking your allies and you're against the brood, please make sure that you do end up... Make sure that you do end up um, attacking the spiders as much as possible. Luckily I saw the Broodmother coming past, that was really silly for him. He should have realized that we still had a sentry ward there, um, and he did not, so I was able to land a, a, a blind shot there. The Chaos Knight actually didn't have any mana at this point, so it was really crucial that I landed that. Normally I would buy a boots at this point, but we're kind of trying to push, and I want to give allies or uh, uh, mana to my allies, so I bought a Ring of Basilius, which should help out the Chaos Knight quite a bit, and eventually he will get back up to a farming item. Or sorry, uh, a man, man of Devil cast a spell. I grabbed that CS because I knew he wasn't going to be able to get there in time. So, Diabolic Edict is really good, especially against Broodmother and other Invis heroes as a support Leshrac. Maxing out Split Earth first is almost always the, the best decision to make. My pull's not going to work. It wasn't even a good time, honestly. It wasn't going to catch. I'm going to be able to land a stun here on this guy. I was considering putting the Edict down. I maybe should have gone more aggressive on this. I'm going to be able to get the spiders, I think. Yeah, I think I should have continued to chase, honestly. I played it a little too safe there because of the two spiders. I should have gone after it. That was a mistake on me. But I like going... Um, I actually like equal leveling of both Split Earth and the Diabolic Eater, though. I think it's really strong. Don't be afraid to nuke down the spiders as well um, with some right-clicking. Uh, it's a little hard to kill them right now because the, the recently spawned spiders will have... 450 HP. Those are the spiders that are spawned from the spawn spiderlings cast. The ones that duplicate after a spider dies, or a creep dies, is our 175 gold. Those ones are really easy to kill. The 450 ones are harder, so they're not quite extremely easy to, to nuke down here. Uh, 
Um, so the Chaos Knight's a little bad at Chaos Knight, but he's actually good at last hitting. I'm pretty happy with his last hitting so far. He's been doing a good job with that. I'm just going to continue covering the Brood. Um, the pulling obviously hasn't been an option. I still can't afford boots yet because I was kind of forced into buying a Basilius really early. So unfortunately I'm not able to go do support on the other lanes. But luckily our Undying is, is uh, covering those other lanes and that's going to make our, our lanes pretty strong. So I think we're also out of Sentry Wards. Could be a bit of a problem. There's a lot of spiders on the board. So hopefully we can shut down this ultimate solo offlane player. I was just kind of waiting to see if the spiders would stop moving. If they stopped moving, then I wanted to nuke them. Looks like some of them are just kind of timing out here. So I'll just continue to cover him for now. If I wasn't here, actually, the spider could be a lot more aggressive. And it's oftentimes a bit of a, a scary thing for... For uh, single target heroes like Chaos Knight, he can definitely be overwhelmed by the spiders a bit. Um, the reason it gets really hard is because um, once you get a couple spiders, you just right-click them on the hero. And that's actually something the Brood should be doing to me, that he's not doing at all. If you right-click all the spiders on a support hero like uh, Lesh, for example, simply put, it's just going to do some damage. Yeah, that Edict was really ineffective. I was like hoping to kill spiders there, but that did pretty much nothing. That wasn't worth casting at all. He does like, what, 25 damage for 32 explosions. I think it's like 500 damage or something. Composite. Um, and that, that would kill like maybe one spider. And if it's spread across four spiders, it does almost nothing. I decided to continue leveling the split earth because I wanted the damage to increase as well as the radius. So. This is what happens when you get ganked by a storm spirit. Pretty easy kill by them. It was very smart of them. I, sh I should have stayed back because I knew they had a storm, obviously. He's definitely going to gank on me. And if I'm initiated and stunned at all, it's going to be a bad thing. Solid stun by the CK, but he's still probably going to die. And he does still die. So, double kill for them. Nicely done. I unfortunately do not have TP scroll mana so or money, so I'm just going to buy another Ironwood branch because I'll eventually make a wand and I'll just go run back to base. Or back to the lane, that is. So the Brood's not exactly playing this right, but we're reacting pretty accordingly. We got a bunch of kills on him. Um, he has died two times. He's gotten two assists, though. So he's pretty happy. And now he's going to try to take the tower. This is really important for me to get back to the creep lane uh, as fast as possible. I'm just going to use Edict to kill this while I run, because I don't really want to slow down here. I want to make sure that I'm able to slow down the tower. I'm getting some spider kills here. Now, it's not necessarily important that I get the Brood, but it's really important that I kill as many of the creeps as possible. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And to clean up more spiders, that's some free EXP and gold for me, which is pretty nice. And the tower is defended, so... If you don't have an AoE hero, like, if, if you have a single target support hero, and somebody picks Brood, you're in, a, in for a rough time if the Brood is good. Because you don't have a way to deal with the spiders. If you don't have any AoE, it gets really bad. Like, we went to be able to defend that tower, possibly, if we didn't have Nature's Prophet ulti, as well as my Split Earth, so. And Split Earth is so sexy. It is, like, the most rewarding thing ever when it lands. It's just, like, that booming sound. It's like, boom. It's beautiful. Really good single spider stun. Wasn't that good, guys? And this is exactly what happens. Spiders do a lot of damage. This is what he should have been doing a while ago, in my opinion. We got another spider, at least. Now I'm completely out of mana, and I have to go back to base. And that was just one cast. Like, we only got, like, 40 gold out of that. That's it. A little experience. It's actually really easy to harass on supports, even if they do have AoE. He did a little micro. He pulled them away as I was getting ready to do a split earth, and it worked out really nicely. So now that I'm hyper rich, I'm going to buy a magic wand and a TP scroll. This will give me very slight burst survivability. If you are playing a melee hero, by the way, against a breed, you have to get a stout shield. If you do not get a if you don't get a stout shield, those spiders will harass you down so fast. One hundred percent, you need a stout shield. It's a smart dodge by the Undyne, anticipating the raises. I was considering TPing for this, but he looked pretty darn dead. If I would have gone up there, I would have died as well, I'm pretty sure. He did have an armlet finish, so there's like vague chances that he could continue to survive, but I just didn't see that. So top tower is probably going to go down. Oh, 
Oh, I should have committed to the tower. I didn't see that. I actually could have killed that with Edict. That was a mistake. I think I could have killed the tower at least with Edict. I don't know if we ended up not getting this or not, but... Anyways, I landed a skill shot on the Earthshaker. I was at the mid lane uh, just in time, and we were able to get the follow-up. I look while tapped. Oh yeah, this tower is going to die for sure. I don't think anyone will contest this. And I got the last hit. Booyah. So that's a hand of Midas for Invoker. And I think I'm going for Arcane Boots now. Oh wait, I don't have the money. I don't have a thousand. I only have 750. I think, I don't remember if I got an urn this game. I really don't remember. We have decent wards up. I think our Undyne's been very selfless in buying a lot of wards this game. And my kind of plan was to kind of carry on Leshrac as well. If you're playing a Chaos Knight like this, you should most likely... I think he should have Reality Rifted first, by the way. You should almost always Reality Rift first and then stun. Going stun and allowing him to run that far is is, a, is an unfortunate circumstance. I don't. I assume the Chaos Knight was at least level 7, so he should have 4 Chaos Bolts, so he also did get unlucky on the stun. But, um, you should riff first, especially when they're that close to tower. You gotta pull them outside of tower range. I look, I look like I ult tabbed all the time in this game. What is going on? I guess I'm waiting for the bot lane to push out, which isn't really a good way to spend my time. I should be stacking the Ancients. Yeah, it looks like that's what I'm going to do next. Rude Mother's not really pressuring that super hard yet, so we don't have to worry about shifting to respond to that. At some point, we are going to have to. be set up and kill on the SF again, so we're going in. Nature's Prophet CP in first. We got a Sprout. We actually lucked out there really hard. So hard. The SF decided to move. If he just would have TP'd, he would have made it. I don't think the Chaos Knight realized that Reality Rift doesn't stop the TP. Because he messed up. I was like sitting there like, uh, he should stun, he should stun. And then he threw the stun on the creep. Oh my god. That was scary as hell. I got my arcanes. I have two regen items for mana, and virtually no survivabilities. This is this is really greedy. Again, alt tabbed. That's how you make the high skill plays, guys. Um, it's a little greedy to get both arcane and Basilius on support here. I think this is actually really greedy. Got the Earthshaker again. Only one way he could run. He didn't try juking backwards. A little silly by him, but... And now I'm level 8. Uh, the reason that it's really scary to spend so much on, on, in, on mana items is they have a Storm Spirit, for example. So even with good positioning, there's only so much that I can stop him from initiating on me. Free Spiders. Spiders. Getting my ulti now is actually really clutch and important. Um, the reason it's so good is because I actually have the mana to be able to afford to do it, and I need more ways to deal damage to invisible heroes and to do boost and burst. I do like picking up my lightning bolt, it's especially this game. I think it's going to be worth it because of all the spiders. Um, but grabbing your ulti is really important. If you're playing a hard carry Leshrac or a Leshrac that's actually farming a lot, your main damage source ends up being actually your ulti. Um, and that's because your mana pool is so good that you can pick up a Bloodstone and an Aghanim Scepter and then you do huge damage per second. And if we look at the scaling quick on this, 20 or 66 damage at level 1 per second, it does 144 at level 16, which is pretty darn good. If you think of, uh, compare this to Iron Shell, Iron Shell does 90 damage per second and a small AoE around you. Um, Leshrac's Pulse Nova does 144 without Aghanims, 177 with Aghanims, does a lot of damage in this big AoE, which makes it really worth it to uh, to skill up the thing. I bu bought some wards, by the way, so don't say that I'm not buying any wards this game. But I did purchase some. But I'm getting a lot of kills and farm and stuff, despite playing support, so I am able to pick up a point booster next. Definitely focusing on the survivability aspect next, because I delayed it long enough. It, it was definitely a little scary to go... Basilius and Arcanes. I would almost always criticize this if I saw this on another support hero myself. It's just a little... It's really... It's really risky. If their team was pressuring us more and maybe ganking and stuff like that, or actually coordinating ganks on us, then I would be running into some Dyer's trouble. So. 
From here, I can actually jungle really easily. Um, I was going to jungle, but then I noticed they were pushing mid, so back to the mid lane we go. Can see if I can set them in. Just waiting on the high ground, right on top of a ward. I was like, come on guys, come forward. We'll, we'll gank you, I want to gank you. See where the SF goes. I think, did you have an invis or something? Should have tried to out metagame that guy, that would have been cool. I'm trying to look for a setup so they don't see me coming, because it's the only way I'm going to be able to land the stun when they're moving. Should have anticipated. I keep like playing to anticipate people being stupid. If I anticipate people being really, really good, then you'll see some super sick split earths. Where I would have been like, oh, he's going to ball lightning on top of that undying, therefore I should stun the undying. Although you could see the orientation, but. It's the only, ma that's the only way I'll make it onto Dota Cinema top 10 plays, let's be honest. Alright, top tower now being crushed. I do not have a TP scroll, unfortunately. Looks like Undyne was actually going to TP here. He's not the best hero for killing spiders, but he's okay. And luckily for me, the spiders are coming over here. Spider gold! Definitely worth it to try on your ulti for this, just to guarantee that you get the last hits. And most of those spiders actually were about to time out, so completely worth it. It really isn't that much mana over time, by the way. It costs a lot to activate the Pulse Nova 110, but the mana per second is 20, 40, 60. It's not bad at all. Really, really mana efficient once you get a 1,000 mana pool. And since the only other two spells I'm going to be spamming are Split Earth as well as Edict, I could do Pulse Nova for a very, very long duration before I actually run out of mana. Picking up Sentry Wards now as well to be able to spot out the Broodmother if we do end up ganking him. My HP is still in a, in a place where I'm not feeling too happy about it, but as I finish more Bloodstone components, it'll be okay. And Bloodstone is, is really good on support less tracks for a couple reasons. I don't recommend getting to every game, by the way. If you're not doing well, you shouldn't get Bloodstone. You should probably go like Arcane Force Staff or, or something like this. Man, I want to kill a spider so bad. He's going to dust on the Brood here. We got a stun. He unfortunately reality rifted in melee range, so we're going to lose out on the, the kill, I think. It was a big mistake from the Chaos Knight here. He needed to reality rift first to get him closer. I mean, he could stun and then Reality Rift. There's no point, basically... Oh, God, all the spiders. I think I saw the spiders, actually. Got to kill a bunch of them. There's no point to throw a stun, walk into melee range, and then Reality Rift. It's worth it to stun while Reality Rifting, because then you close the distance, basically. Like, if you Reality Rift in melee range, you get the damage bonus, but you're not getting the, 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 the gap closer, basically. And you need to at least get the gap closer out of it. So that little mistake lost us the, the Broodmother, for sure. We should have gotten that kill. It was also unlucky that he did get a two second stun. If it was anything more than two second, I would have been a I would have been there in time. And we would have been able we would have been able to get the kill. So kind of unfortunate. So yeah, if you're not getting bloodstone, try to get like a four staff or um treads is pretty good if you're really behind, because you'll need some survivability. I actually like treads a lot. For support less track. But if you are doing really well, Bloodstone is awesome. The reason Bloodstone ends up being really good is it gives you a lot of survivability and it gives you unlimited mana, essentially. And once you get unlimited mana, you can spam your abilities more and more and more. And the survivability is nice. And the main reason that's really nice to be able to spam your abilities is because you can farm the jungle. And AoE um, casters can farm the jungle really efficiently. You just sit there and you cast on the jungle. It's, it's really simple. I, I did lose that kill from the spider, I think. Do I see some spider kills? He did go invisible at the last second there, but we were able to catch him with my AoE. So now I've hit level 11. I now do how much damage per second? Uh, 100 damage over time. Really, really solid damage. Make sure, uh, don't forget that you can actually cancel your stuns. So, for example, I knew that wasn't going to hit the the Shadow Fiend, so I didn't uh, put too much into that. Just like my level 1 Lightning, guys. I'm just trying to contest the Shadow Fiend, basically, from coming up into range. I'm going to buy my Vitality Booster first. In, in a lot of situations, as a mid-hero, I would usually buy the regen item here if I was doing really well. But since I'm a support, I just want to make sure that I have as much survivability as possible, so I'm not going to chance this too much. Again, using Split Earth the farm to guarantee that I get the range creeps and to do it a little faster. 
think I'll take one more creep wave and that'll go back to heal. And that should get me either a void stone or something else like that. Shooting really well, five, one, and three. Hell yeah, I'm awesome. I really like Leshrac though. There's not a lot of uh, support heroes that I feel really strong on, but Leshrac is definitely one of them. I feel really good on Leshrac. I understand him very well. He's not that hard to play, honestly. You just stun and you do edict, and you make good decision making, and you can scale into HP items, and you can be aggressive. I just, I guess, I just like aggressive playstyle heroes mostly. See that, guys? I bought two sets of ward this game, it's two sets of wards, and I bought a flying courier. Pretty much supporting. I could make my soul booster right now if I dissembled my arcane boots. Um, some occasionally I'll do this, not very often though. Uh, I'd probably only do it on really high end game heroes, perhaps. Um, maybe like a pugna. Not that you really ever, you would never build a, pu a bloodstone pugna. That's not worth it at all. But some heroes I would do it on. And here's an example of jungling very easily. You split earth, use diabolic edict. I'm gonna be able to pull these together with the edict. Don't want to waste any of the damage here. Unfortunately, unfortunately for me, there nature's prophet stealing some of my CS, but. Yep, jungling is pretty easy with him. I see all the spider gold. God, I keep looking at the spiders. I'm like, I need to be there and kill those. Why am I not murdering spiders right now? Oh, I didn't explain uh, lightning. I don't know this why this looks like starfall, but so the way lightning storm works is it's uh, it's basically a chain lightning spell. You cast it on one of uh, one creeper or hero, and it's going to bounce from person to person doing damage. It gets more jumps as you level it up. It only goes to eight jumps. It's not infinite like it kind of seems like sometimes. I actually missed a lot of the spiders there. I thought they were going to go to creeper. Excuse me, and they didn't. Um, but it does more damage. It's actually a pretty crappy nuke, two hundred sixty-five damage. So don't don't anticipate this being your big damage dealer. But the bright side is that the cooldown is really low, and you can cast it pretty safely. You just cast it on a ranged creep, or a creep, and it'll bounce from hero or from creep to creep, and you usually slow down a push by a lot. It doesn't bounce infinitely, but it doesn't really matter too much because Lesh is already still a really good AoE monster. The downside is that Leshrac's casting animations are really, really long, and this is the original reason why Leshrac just simply wasn't played. It's because Edict, um, Edict had a cast animation, Split Earth had a cast animation, and Lightning had a cast animation. It really took Edict not having a cast animation for this hero to be seen as, oh hey, this hero is actually pretty good, we should play him. Um, I still think he's good, it just costs a lot more. And then I realized that the slow is unbearable and I really needed to be careful. I put a ward down and I bought a TP. I maybe could have fought him there, I definitely panicked a little bit, but that was pretty scary. He actually already used his ulti. Um, right before uh, when I saw him, so I, I definitely got a little overly scared there, but I panicked, dropped the ward, and then I bought a TP, because I didn't want to drop any or sell anything else, so that ward's not very good, obviously, but it will at least spot some offlane heroes, so could be worse, that's for sure. I don't think I could have killed him, though. I could have used Split Earth and Die Bulk Edict, but even if my full Edict uh, hit him, I don't think it would have killed him, and he probably could have just ran away, so I think just TPing out was the was the best choice in this case. So I'm going to go shift over, going to go try to kill some spiders or something. I'm going to luck out and find some. Oh, that feels good. And then I found an Ogre Magi, so I've got to run for my life. I'm trying to cast the Edict here. It's a great sprout there. And of course, once he's sprouted, I have the easiest stun ever. So I'm able to land it. Did I get multicasted or something? Because I took so much damage there. I, I can't finish my Bloodstone now, though. I've got 2,000 gold. Just need to finish my uh, my Perseverance here. Now this part gets a little scary. I'm basically making a Bloodstone right next to a bunch of enemies, and I only have 200 HP. I really wanted to kill that storm. I don't remember going this this ham on it. If I would have hesitated a little bit less, I had two misclicks. When I was in the mid lane, I was watching the fight and I could have kept running. If I would have been there half a second earlier, I could have stunned the storm while he was fighting for sure. So a little a little mistake by me. 
And I also backed up instead of checking out to see what the fight was, because I was scared. I was basically like, oh, I have 200 HP, I just got a Bloodstone, I don't want to die, but I should have looked at the circumstance. I could have landed the Stun of the Storm and gotten that kill for sure. And then I maybe could have killed the Earthshaker, because dying to an Earthshaker is unlikely. I don't know if he used Echo or not. It looks like he already used Echo. I think I maybe could have killed the Earthshaker as well, so... Very slight mistakes for me there. I should have just barrel rolled into there a little faster. It's not really a turn, but I'm making it one. So, support Leshrac, 26 minutes. I've got a Bloodstone. I have a Ring of Basilius. It's not really needed, but the three armor is actually kind of nice. <sighs> Things should be working out okay. God, I don't even know if my voice is recording. All right, good it is. Thank God. <laughs> I really should have checked that. Is this the actual mic? All right, good. I'm using the correct mic, guys. I, I don't know if I... Oh, I should probably should adjust this. I'm sure people already adjusted their audio for the appropriate levels. Land my stun as the sprout ends. A little bit of a waste on Edict, but I'm really happy about fighting right now. We did some damage to the Earthshaker there. He actually did have a Blink Dagger at this point. But we were able to deny him from blinking with the invisible right click from Prophet, so that was that was good for us. Yeah, he did have a blink dagger. He was looking for a setup basically. We're able to take the tower really fast because Diabolic Edict absolutely destroys towers. It's really good against towers. One of the reasons Leshrek was at a at a point uh, top tier support hero. But with the cast animation change, he stopped being less popular. So I now have Lightning Storm maxed out. The reason I'm getting this is because I, as a support hero, it's okay. If you're playing a hard carry Leshrac, it's not really that needed. You're generally better off getting a couple more stat levels, because you don't want to spend the time casting. But as a support, I'm usually going to sit a bit farther back. Now jungling's a bit easier with having two AoE nukes like this, so I can use Lightning Storm as well as the Split Earth to take CS. When you have tankier things, like... Uh, the Ursus, you're generally going to need to use all three spells. A little Edict wasted here, but not too much. So jungling gets really fast at this point. In terms of boot choices, you have a couple options. Um, if you're playing a very serious Leshrac carry, like you're actually just farming with it, you can buy Boots of Travel at this point. The reason Boots of Travel gets really good after Bloodstone is because your respawn time when you have a lot of Bloodstone charges is very, very quick. So if your respawn time is fast, you'll respawn really quickly, and then you'll be able to TP back into the fight using Boots of Travel. You can also buy back, um, which could give you potentially three respawns. No, that's not true. If you grab an Aegis, you get three with Boots of Travel, but that's about it. I'm over here, and there's not really a lot of places to farm, so I'm just going to stack an Ancient, and somebody else can kill this. I think I seem to remember Cast and I attempted this, but it's not going to work. The Earth he only has a... Uh, an armlet, I think. He didn't have popping his ulti for this one. Yeah, he has an armlet and a and his, That's not going to work. That is not going to work. So, back in the jungle for me. Yep, and there it is. All of his illusions are dead. He looks like he killed the uh, the rock dudes, at least. But I think people must have been pinging for a uh, Roshan or something. I think he also forgot to armlet his, his illusions, so that, that's going to slow him down by a bit, too. Edict is really good at killing Roshan as well. I'm just going to break his Lincolns here for in case anybody wants to use Cold Snap. And there it is. Cold Snap really good against Roshan as well. If you're playing uh, support heroes like Lina, for example, always throw your, your AoE stun. They usually on really short cooldowns and reducing his DPS slightly is pretty nice. So it's usually pretty worth it. Especially if you don't have like a survivable tank, it's definitely very good to... To throw that, should throw this. Uh, should have thrown the stun first there. All right, so I bought a ghost scepter. I think the ghost scepter is a smart pickup. Um, sometimes I'm greedy and I'm just like, ah, oh, I just want to buy boots to travel because I have brown boots. It looks cool. Like, makes you run fast. Um, ghost scepter is a much safer choice, and the reason is number one, they have a storm with ghost scepter. Or, I'm sorry, with uh, orchid. Ghost scepter by far the best way and the cheapest way to counter an early storm if he's jumping on you. The reason being, um, for him to do any of his magic sources, um, he can do uh, remnant damage, but it's not that bad. It's a 220 damage nuke, uh, remnant is, and if you take bonus damage because of Ghost Scepter, it's not that bad, because you're only going to take one of those. No no big loss. Ball Lightning will do bonus damage or whatever, but that's about it. 
So now that I have a Ghost Scepter, if Storm Balls on me, I can just Ghost Scepter. If the Broodmother decides to try to commit and kill me with his ulti, I can Ghost Scepter. So I basically have options to survive against all of their heroes at this point. And there it is, he initiates, I pop Ghost Scepter, I'll take one Remnant. I'm going to take one Raze, I think. But I'll be able to run away. A little surprised, actually, they didn't commit on me harder. I think they could have dived under tower, but I guess they they were just playing it safe. And we end up catching an Earthshaker because of it, so... You just have to use the Ghost Scepter before you get pulled. If you do that, you break... You, you, you burn their stun, basically. They maybe could have killed me if Shadow Fiend wasn't bad at raising, but he missed his raises. He only got one raise off, and the second one completely whiffed. Maybe because he tried to right-click me and then raise me, and you can't right-click because I was Ghost Scepter. I'm not sure how he raises. I don't know if he clicks the ground or clicks, but, uh, clicks me, but... Anyways, they survive. I'm a perennial. I have no idea why he stayed. I am so confused by this. <laughs> we all, I laughed there. I just couldn't believe it. Maybe he didn't see the Aegis animation or something. I'm, I'm not sure. He forgot to do his armlet again. But it's okay. They end up getting him anyways. Always do arm level for your split. It takes a lot of Chaos Knight games before you remember. So I understand why he would mess it up. God, I really wish I was closer. I don't want them to know I'm there, so I'm going to stop my stun. But I really wish I was there. Storm Spirit is so vulnerable to me now. He's always going to jump on somebody. And I'm usually. It's darkness as well. If it's nighttime, Lesh is the man. Like, nighttime helps a lot if you're playing a hero like Leshrac or Lena. Because it gives you this setup, basically. They're not going to be able to see you from range. If you stay slightly outside of night vision range, which is like 800, it's about your cast animation. So if there's trees in the way and things like that, much lower chance of you being spotted. So if it's nighttime, you have a really good chance of landing stunts. Oh, I wanted to kill these so bad. Don't run, spiders! Oh, that was the saddest day of my life. But they stayed around. Alright, I didn't want to go too hard on those because I was afraid about getting ganked. And, and actually, the Earthshaker blinked forward, so it was really good that I didn't. Those items look so ugly together, don't they, guys? These colors just don't clash well. From a fashion statement, my items are horrible. From a practicality standpoint, they're great. Ghost Scepter looks a lot better with uh, light colored items, but I have like a blue item and a red item and like it's the yellowish green. But uh, dang it, I'm not dying. With the items? Oh, I think that was uh, Prophet. Uh, yes, it was. It was Prophet. I don't know he's building with that, with that, maybe a BKB? He's probably building a BKB for the Storm Spirit because Storm is pretty... In this case, I opted not to start the Edict cast. Sometimes the extra animation can be a little problematic. I just want to do as much range damage as possible. I mean, I could I could have technically done Edict uh, instead of the Lightning Bolt, but there are a lot of creeps there, so it would have been a bit tough. We should be able to go high ground, though. They lost two fairly important heroes. They lost a stun, and they lost the Brood, who is their offlane hero. So we can just go high ground here and use Edict on the tower, and it, it should be okay. I think I just started casting, unfortunately, so... Make sure you clear the creeps very fast if they're sucking up edict damage. It's worth the extra nuke. So once we kill the tower, we can just go high ground and slowly siege it. Alright, he remembered armlet this time. That's very good. I don't... Did I actually hit that stun? I'm not sure. It looked really close. That was a really weak echo slam, though. It was not well done, I don't think. I don't think he stunned anybody with it, actually. It was really misplaced. Hell yeah, Boots of Travel, guys. I was able to do it. And I get to sell a TP scroll, so now I'm, I run a lot faster. I'm actually... Four, 415 movement speed is actually really good now. Um, it's one of the benefits of Boots of Travel. Boots of Travel is really expensive, obviously, at 2k gold, but uh, for the recipe alone. But it gives you 100 movement speed. Regular Boots gives you 55, I think. So it's you can kind of look at it as a 50 movement speed advantage, which is relatively cheap for the item. Another item that gives you really inexpensive movement speed is actually uh, Yule Scepter. I built the Yule, Yule Scepter one, I think, on that Chen game. It gives you 30 movement speed now. It used to only give, like, 20, but they slowly buffed it because nobody ever builds the item. So 
Um, 30 movement speed on Yule Scepter, that's for 2700 gold. That's also another really inexpensive way to increase your movement speed. Downside is most int heroes need HP items, so grabbing Yules isn't usually something you can afford to do, but... It wouldn't be too bad in this case, because they have fairly limited stuns. Um, getting away from the Broodmother could be really nice, for example. This guy still doesn't actually have a, uh, a BKB, so very, very easy kill there for the Prophet. This guy is really bad at paying attention to when I'm coming to kill him. I'm going to actually use Edict here. He is actually life stealing quite a bit, but my Ghost Scepter was able to keep me alive for a bit. I am still going to die, though. 10 second BKB is really, really rough. I actually can't deal with it very well, especially when he has lifesteal. Makes it a lot harder to deal with his HP. We were able to kill the Brood at least. I just respawned because of my fast Bloodstone. Because my Bloodstone charges here. Fast time, guys. Because, like, that lightning kill. I couldn't actually see if you guys were curious. I'm okay with that. I maybe could have done it slightly better. It felt really good at the time. He actually cancelled his ulti on the high ground, because I don't think he knew... Yeah, he couldn't see either, actually. He probably could have ultied. Because my stun... I was I was approaching the high ground, I was like, this SF might be ulti me, so I threw the stun. Or TPing. Either one of those. I was actually expecting a TP, I think. He was starting to ulti, he stopped, he started to walk, and then I stunned him. I think he could have ultied me from high ground. That would actually would have really crushed me. Um... I did kill him before I died, which is the important part, so I actually got EXP. If I take a look at the levels on my touchpad here... God, never played Dota on a touchpad. He is level 19, and I'm now level 18, so considering I'm a supporter, this is really good for me. Um, the lanes are pretty pushed out, so I decided it was safe to go TP to the bot lane. This is somewhere where my teammates aren't really farming, so I should be able to take this just fine. Throw a stun here and then do a lightning. And miss pretty much all the creeps. Um, I maybe should have stunned instead of landing bolted. It's hard to say. I don't know if he ulted me twice there. I think he just... That's right, he did get his ulti off first. But I maybe should have just stunned the high ground. I don't know if I would have gotten him in time. Regardless, I got the kill before I died. That was me killing uh, uh, a mid or a hard carry. I think that was their hard carry, actually. Their mid, I think, was Storm Spirit. I might be wrong, though. So whatever. I got a kill on the hard carry. And I respawn pretty fast anyway, since I have a bloodstone. So completely worth it. Getting a solo kill on an SF like that is definitely worth it. BKB is a problem. I am running for my life. I really don't want him to touch me. If he touches me, I'm going to be slowed. Fortunately, the uh, disabled just landed here. I should suicide. I should have suicide right there. The Echo Slam shut me down. I was planning to suicide because I knew there was no way that I could get out of that, but... I wasn't expecting the echo slam, and then I got I got killed. I should have just been spamming. As soon as uh as soon as there were three heroes on me like that, I should have just suicided. I I realized that I was in really really big trouble. So unfortunately, I lose my bloodstone charges. I also give them gold and experience, I believe. I'm really bad at remembering to suicide with bloodstone right now. Got to get better at that. So it looks like a butterfly almost on our nature's prophet. Case like insanely farmed. I actually did not go for the Hex build. Um, I saw somebody in the Korean Dota League as well go this build. Uh, just the Orchid, Deso, Shadowblade. It makes you a really good ganking hero if they don't go BKB first, basically. Because once you grab Orchid, you'll go Shadowblade into Orchid pretty fast. You can usually get this before they end up getting... Um, before they end up getting a BKB. And then if you can get solo ganks, you can definitely snowball a bit. Yeah, that ulti is so good. Pulse Nova is actually a really good ulti if you have a lot of mana pool. He actually burned all of his mana there, which is why I just walk into melee range. So Invoker got that kill. Two Bloodstone charges for me. It gives me two more mana per second or something like that. Where the heck is my mouse? Oh, there's my mouse. 
Uh, one mana regen per charge. Yep. So that's not bad. Two more charges, two more mana per second. I guess they decided to leave the Aegis for me. I am a pretty big damage dealer, honestly. If I can survive through a BKB, for example, then it's then I'm pretty safe. Sick cold snap. I don't anticipate him TPing here. Which is fine, because he's going to kill him anyways. So I won a team fight without even like pushing high ground. That's pretty cool. Sending the crew to go get my Shiva's guard. At this point, Shiva's is pretty good. It'll keep me survivable against the Broodmother, for example. And it's important to stay spread out at this point as well. You do not want to let the uh, the ES initiate on you, for example. Which like that. Don't let him do that. Tornado lasted so long. I got blown up. That's why I got Aegis. I don't know if they pop BKBs. I didn't see Brood BKB, which is pretty scary actually. Got the Shiva's coming now. That was the easiest stun I've ever landed. <laughs> it's like, hey guys, stand next to each other. Hurry, BKB, go away. Oh, the force stuff is so good. Ah, uh, that multicast was like the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my whole life. I w that was so frustrating. I was gonna kill that guy. I'm pretty. I don't know. Maybe he popped his ulti at like just the right time. He got it up just in time, though. Oh, nice, he's uh, sunstriked him anyways. That made me feel a lot better. I was like, okay, the brood died, no problem, guys. I believe you bought back for that as well. Radiance yeah, he did, actually. Uh, he got two kills. I'm dying bought back. I'm pretty sure brood bought back. Bought back. There were a lot of buybacks in that team fight. We took Radiance the melee racks regardless, though, so it attack. should be uh, still a team fight win. Um, I had my Shivas. It was flying out, so I lost f uh, five armor from that one, and brood would have attacked a bit slower, so maybe we would have survived, but that multicast wrecked me. Three times multicast. I think that's like nine. It's a mi 900 damage nuke. That's like a dag on five that I got hit with, hit with instead of a dag on less than one. So that sucked. Our Chaos Knight decided to make a Sanjin Yasha with a Helm of the Dominator. Both items, Sanjin Yasha and Helm of the Dominator, I think are not good on Chaos Knight. Helm of the Dominator arguably can be if you make it into Satanic because all the plus strength is really good for your illusions. But um, I don't like Sanjin Yasha. If you grab like a Halberd is kind of okay because it provides evasion to your illusions. But that's the only reason that I that I like uh, uh, that I like Heaven's Halberd, and the strength is okay. Obviously, strength is always going to be good for your illusions. Or, uh, yeah, for your illusions. Um, finished my shivas. I bought a, a talisman of evasion because I still felt like I was having trouble against heroes like Broodmother. Maybe some magic resistance would have been good, like a hood. Really wanted to catch him with a stun here, but unfortunately, I'm not going to get him. Again, Edict on Towers is really good. Radiance top tower has fallen. Radiance top barracks are under attack. Trying to just position ourselves well. We only had three heroes here, by the way, so it's got like, uh, that's that's basically why I backed off. I'm looking at it and I was like, why don't we kill the SF? But then I, was, then I uh, looked at the the overall board. It would have been scary to to lose that fight. Very low chances of uh, of us winning this game at this point, though, because um. All, we still have all of our two, tier 2 towers up. It would take them a lot to push. Mud Golems actually do take Eidic damage. Fun fact. Oh, you see a lot of spiders top. Your damage is actually pretty good with Lush as well. His int gain is really good, I believe. Yeah, 3. It's a really good int gain. His edge gain's a little weak and his strength gain's pretty weak, so. But I guess his edge gain isn't horrible, it's just not that great. <laughs> 
But I do have a lot of plus stat items. I think it's just because I'm a high level, though. Oh, the spiders. Oh my god, the spiders. Do you have detection? No BKB. Let's get in the fight. Let's do some AoE damage. This BKB is last forever, guys. That was a really good stun. But it's okay, because he got a 4 second. And he crit really hard just now. Get there! We did it! It's actually two gems. I didn't know what to do. I was like, what do I do with two gems? So I just left him. What else do you do? No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to sell my wand. I'll go get the gem. And I'm going to finish a Heaven's Halberd as well. It's probably the best evasion item to get on an int hero that isn't a right-click DPS. If you're right-click DPS, whatever, get a butterfly or something, kind of like DK did. But um, if you're more of a utility, and I have plenty of mana, which I definitely do, have, grabbing a halberd will give me two options. I can use it offensively against non-BKB heroes, like Shadow Fiend, or Broodmother, or Storm. Really good against all of them. I easily have the mana to afford it. It's just a really good choice at this point. Obviously, grabbing some detection... I'm sorry, some magic resistance might be the better choice, but it's actually good for HP as well. As you can see, I just boosted up a couple hundred points. It gives me 20 strength, which is actually 400 HP. Really, really good HP. That was a really good cast bolt. That did so much damage. It did 7, 780. It's a huge nuke. Um, so yeah, Heaven's Halberd actually pretty good. Here, it's nighttime, so I can maybe get a range stun. We'll see. I think he just saw me. Put the slow on him so he can't get away. And that's a pretty easy kill. Nighttime helps so much. So we get the racks. There's still four dead heroes. Only person up is Earthshaker. And uh, the ogre was, so that's why I went for it. Got to be pretty careful here. So nice having a gym, though. Radiance Ancient is under attack. Spiders! Oh damn. Guys got a blink dagger. Unfortunately I was casting. God, I'm taking so much damage. I need a suicide. I didn't do it. Oh my god, my respawn's so long. Don't kill my range creep. Clean up! I think I used Halberd just now. Oh, damn. I was so close. The gem. Get the gem. No, he got the gem! I don't remember this from happening, but this doesn't look good. Miss me. Miss me. Yes! Halberd, doing work. Oh, what a hit. Alright, I'm dead. Alright, I suck. It's official. Got outplayed. There's only so much carrying you can do with Leshrac. You definitely start peeking out about this point. I apparently didn't see him type real purge. It's usually I respond to that. So, cool things about Leshrac. His stun is manly as hell. The Diabolic Edict is really good at pushing towers and helping kill invisible units. Once you grab your ulti as well, you can really do good against invisible units. He's probably one of the best supports against Broodmother. Other good supports against Broodmother, uh, Crystal Maiden's... Nah, Crystal Maiden kind of sucks. Leshrac is probably the best support against uh, Shadow or against Broodmother. And I don't remember if that's why I picked him or not, but um, again, he's very, very good against Brood as a support, so having the AoEs there, uh, there is very good. You can land skill shots, but try to get a, a hard carry that can set up stuns for you. Um, this is basically the carry item build that I did here. Again, if you're doing a support just and you're really far behind, go for like a treads and a wand, and then make like a force staff and any utility item that you can get. Um, a lot of leshes in the pro scene will usually, even support ones, will make a BKB because they do want to go melee range and do edict and um, Pulse Nova damage and BKB is the only way they can do that safely without dying. So that's the game. I haven't made a Leshrac game since like March or something. It's been a really long time. Thanks again for making the Google Doc that I can access all the the uh, the dates and stuff on that for. That was a great sentence. Um, and hopefully I can get my desktop fixed now. So thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate it. Sorry about the lower quality of the game. 
and um, of course all this hot air that's been blowing into my genital region for approximately 50 minutes uh, that sucks but uh, yeah thanks for watching I guess <laughs> uh, and I guess I'll see you guys soon alright goodbye alt tab god you can like barely see me that's okay goodbye